Air combat of the future, how far can globalization go? Sovereignty is complex, making transmitting even between close partners with strongly aligned interests difficult. Multi-nation projects are notoriously difficult to pull off, as demonstrated by the difficulties encountered by Europe's Eurofighter, A400M, and main ground combat system, MGCS, programs. The UK-led Global Combat Aircraft Program, GCAP, appears to be going remarkably well, tight schedules, ambitious technology targets, prestigious industry players, and new partner nations. But will it be enough? Since it got underground in 2018, with initial funding of £2 billion, the next-generation fighter jet program, Tempest, has quietly but smoothly built momentum. Firstly, the best of the British aerospace and defense industry have come together under one roof, Team Tempest. This includes Bay Systems, Leonardo UK, MBDA UK, and Rolls-Royce, along with Bombardier Belfast, Collins Aerospace UK, GE Aviation, GKN Aerospace, Martin Baker, Kinetic, Thales UK, and a growing number of startups in the fields of AI, advanced manufacturing, autonomy, human-machine interface, big data analytics, cloud storage, and other disruptive technologies. In July 2021, the UK Ministry of Defence awarded a £250 million contract to advance the design and development of Tempest, funding and officially starting the concept and evaluation phase of the programme. Last year at the Farnborough Airshow, Team Tempest announced that a supersonic demonstrator would be unveiled in flight, within the next five years, and in February, the mod added £1.4 billion to fund the concept and evaluation phase. As part of this contract, UK industry, led by Bay Systems, will collaborate with international partners to carry out concept development, technology maturation, technical demonstration planning, and critical program enablers. Sweden was somewhat more reluctant to commit public money to what it considered an unconvincing business case. After a few months, Stockholm took a step back, finding that Tempest's schedule and operational requirements did not align with its strategic roadmap. Mikhail Johansson, CEO of Saab, was unusually forthright about the company's annual results last month. The Swedes will decide their future steps by the year 2030. We, therefore, engage in dialogue with prospective partners, albeit sometimes not at the most senior levels. Sweden's help is required for that, he remarked this in passing, subtly inviting participation in the FCAS continental effort. While other potential European partners are limited and unlikely to make a significant contribution, Britain did what it does best, went abroad to seek wealth, and successfully. A ray of hope from the east. Like the dawn, the ray of hope came from the Far East. In December 2020, Japan and the UK agreed to merge their main next-gen platforms, Tempest and FX. The plan was to start the development phase in 2024 and build a future advanced fighter jet together by 2035. The Japanese taxpayer signed up, which is no small feat, as the Japanese Defense Ministry had already allocated $600 million. In fiscal years 2020 and 2021, to finance FX developments. And yesterday, it emerged that, the cost of the project will probably be around 40% for Japan and Britain. While, Rome will pay only a fifth of the total cost of development, people with knowledge of the talks told Reuters between the three nations. It has been acknowledged that, much of the details of the program are yet to be decided meaning that the three countries have not yet reached an agreement on further streamlining defense cooperation. The, who does what, has not been resolved. The devil is in the details. The Franco-German-Spanish air combat system of the future is still in its infancy, and many bad things can happen before a next-generation fighter demonstrator flies. The numerous U-turns and clashes leading up to the signing of the first major development contract were excruciating. But Phase 1B is underway, with a budget of 3.2 billion euros. Will a demonstrator finally fly in 2030, as expected? We don't know. Will a new generation weapon system enter service in its current form in 2040-50? I don't know. Despite the lengthy and arduous process, the three countries are now aligned, and the industry teams are prepared to work together, 
pillar by pillar, under clear and widely agreed upon rules. There will be 2,000 European technicians involved in the industrial phase, 800 of which will be from Airbus, and it will begin on March 20th. Thanks for watching.